What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna look at pandas for data analysis with Python. All right guys, like I said in this video, we're gonna look at pandas for data analysis with Python. But before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps out. And check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Friday, February 14th, Valentine's Day, my official birthday. Crazy. And uh, I thought we'd spend it doing a little bit of Python data analysis. What better way to spend your birthday and the most romantic day of the year than doing data analysis, right? That's right. So if you forgot to get your girlfriend flowers, don't forget, you still have time. Okay, so we've been talking about uh, a little bit of data analysis stuff in this playlist. If you haven't seen the first couple of videos, go back, uh, check out the link in the comments below to check out the playlist. We've looked at NumPy a little bit. We haven't spent a whole lot of time on it because we're not gonna use NumPy a whole lot. You need to be familiar with it, but you don't need to really master it. You should, but you don't have to. So we're just gonna move forward to Pandas because it's a lot more fun. Now Pandas is, uh, something you're gonna use for data analysis always. And Pandas has two real workhorses that you're gonna use, the series and the data frame. And we're gonna look at both of those very quickly in this video. Now, you're gonna mostly be using data frames. That's what Pandas is for. You're gonna be using data frames. Uh, but data frames are made up of series. So you, you need to be familiar with them and at least know what they are. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time talking about series, but I'm gonna show you what they are. So first things first, we have to make sure that Pandas is installed. So if you remember, if you watch the other videos, let me control C to break out of my Jupyter Notebook command prompt here. We are in, let's clear the screen, the C forward slash DA for data analysis directory. We're inside of our virtual environment. And this is where we've been working throughout this playlist. Now we just need to pip install pandas. And that's plural, P-A-N-D-A-S. And it will download and install some things and uh, should be good to go. Okay, so that's done. Now we can just run the Jupyter Notebook command again to restart our Jupyter Notebook. And so I'm just gonna come up here and hit reload. And if you remember the Jupyter Notebook, I named it testing. You name it anything you want, it really doesn't matter. And now we wanna keep our import NumPy as MP because Pandas uses NumPy. But now we also have to import Pandas as PD. And that's the convention, so shift enter to run that. And that's all we have to do to import pandas. Now, uh, I also wanna create some random data. So I'm just gonna right now, I'm gonna go from numpy.random import rand in. Okay, so that just allows us to create some random numbers. So, all right, first things first, let's talk a little bit about series. And a series is very much like a numpy array. The only real difference is it can have labels and an index. So. Uh, let's just look at this real quick. Let's create, let's create some data and let's set this equal to, we'll just make a list here and we just want some numbers, 41, 12, 62, it really doesn't matter. Now let's create a NumPy array out of this. We've already done this before. Uh, I'm just gonna call it NumPy-array and we want this to be a, a NumPy.array and we just wanna pass in data. So shift enter to run this. Now we can take a look at this. If we want numpy underscore array. And it's just this array of 41, 12, and 16. And we can run a type on this if we wanna make sure that this is in fact a numpy array. And yes, it is, it's a numpy array. All right, so we already know how to do this, no big deal. Now let's create a series as well. And we can do this in several different ways. We'll look at a bunch of different ways to do it, a couple at least. So inside of here, Let's also create some labels. Because remember, a series has an indexed label system, which we'll see. So let's just go John and I don't know, Sally. And let's go Tim. Okay, so now to create our series, we can just we can name this. I'm just gonna call it my series. And to create this, we go pd.series, because it's the panda series. And we just wanna pass in data and labels. And as for our data, let's pass in this NumPy array that we created earlier. And we also want labels, so we'll pass in our labels, right? So now if we run this, my underscore series, 
shift enter, we get this. And it looks very much like our NumPy array if we call NumPy array again, right? Except this has indexes, these, these index rows, right? With labels. That's really the only big difference. And we can confirm, we can go, let's see, type equals my series. And yes, in fact, this is a series, right? So that's cool. Now we pass the NumPy array as the data. We could also just put our data. And if we do that, nothing really changes. And in fact, we can, you know, run a type just to make sure. Yep, it's still a series. And uh, so that's kind of cool. So we can leave off the labels. We don't have to have labels. In this case, the indexes become numerical. And these are the same kind of numbering system like you would have in a Python list. The first item is the zeroth item, right? The second one is one, the third one is three, the third one is two, right? So that's kind of cool. Now we passed our data, that those were numbers, we can also pass our labels instead and we can make a series out of our labels. And now the data becomes John, Sally and Tim and it's still a series, so kind of interesting. So those are series, that's one way to do it. There's another way you could do it, you could just create a dictionary, a Python dictionary. So let's do that real quick. And we're gonna pass the same data, so we want John, and let's see, John was 41, and then we had Sally, Sally was 12, and then we had Tim, Tim was 62. So now we have this dictionary, right? Now we could just create a series on like that. So let's create my series. It's going to be a PD dot series. And now instead of passing in the data and the labels separately, like we did uh, originally up here when we went data slash labels, right? Instead of that, we can just pass in the dictionary. And then pandas will use the key value pairs here. So this is a key, this is a value, this is a key, this is a value. This is a key, this is a value, you know, just like all Python dictionaries, it will break apart those key value pairs and use the keys as the index rows and the values as the data, right? So we can run this and then we can call my underscore series and we get the same exact thing as up here. It just might be a little bit easier to do it this way. Now, like here and here, we actually passed in variables. You don't have to, you can pass in actual data. So we could just pass in this whole thing like this instead. Now, generally speaking, and if we run this shift enter, nothing's gonna change, it's the same exact thing. Generally speaking, you wanna break these things apart into variables just because you're gonna be working with huge amounts of data in the future, right? And you're not gonna to wanna to put lists of all that data with millions of rows and stuff. You would instead just put a variable, but you could if you wanted to. So those are series, very simple, not much to them at all. Now, I wanna talk just a minute about uh, data frames. And we're gonna talk more about data frames going forward. I just wanna introduce them in this video because they're the most important thing in pandas. They're the thing you're gonna use always. And a data frame, think of it as a spreadsheet. That's really what it is. It's just a fancy spreadsheet. You know, if you've used Excel in the past, you're gonna be very familiar with a data frame. They are the same, rows and columns. They're even visually similar looking, right, as we'll see. So let's create one real quick. Uh, let's create some new data and I'm gonna call it data. And I'm gonna make some random stuff. So let's just go rand in, because remember up here, we imported this random uh, rand in. This will generate random numbers. Oops, we wanna equal there. So we want random numbers, and let's say we want, I don't know, five and four. We can now run data, and we see we have an array with, or five and three. Well, let's go five and four. I want four, why not? So we have one, we have one, two, three, four columns. That's this guy right here. And we have one, two, three, four, five rows. So five rows, four columns, right? So that's our data, right? Simple, we're just creating some dummy data. And every time we run this, we'll get uh, more data or we'll get different data. So we run it again, the numbers change every time. So just, just random data, no big deal. So now we can create a, a data frame from that. And I'm just gonna call it DF for data frame. And it's gonna be a PD dot data frame. Data is capitalized and frame is capitalized. And now we just want to pass in 
some data. So we want to pass in data. We also want to pass in rows and columns, right? So we need to create labels for our rows and columns. And that's what these are. These are the labels for our rows and our columns. So let's create um, some rows. And I'm just going to create a list here. And we need five because we designated five rows. So I'm just going to go A, B, C, D, and E, right? And then we need columns. So I'm just going to call them columns. And again, it's a list. So I'm just going to copy our uh, John Sally Tim list here. So boom. And then we need to add one more. So what, Mary? So shift enter to run this, shift enter to run this. Now we can look at our data frame and boom, here it is. So it's very much like an Excel spreadsheet or any kind of spreadsheet, right? We have rows and if you hover your mouse over them, they kind of change colors. That's kind of nice. Uh, they, we have columns, John, Sally, Tim, Mary. The rows have headers, A, B, C, D, E. The columns have names, right? We designated what those are up here. And again, we put variables here. We could just as easy we could just as easily have passed in our actual data you know it gets a little sloppy to read so i don't really recommend you do that and um, now what's interesting is each of these columns is actually a pandas series and we can we can see that so we can go df and let's call john so here we get just the column john and you can spot check this 1.77 1.77 0.389, 0.389, yep, so this is definitely that column. And if we actually run a type command on this to see what exactly this data is, we can see sure enough, it is a series. So, uh, you know, good to know what a series is because these things will have the attributes of series because they are series in the future. This will be useful to know um, and we'll see why in the future, right? So very cool and very quick intro to, to pandas. There's all kinds of stuff we want to learn about pandas and we'll get into it in the future. But uh, pandas think series, think data frames. You can kind of forget about series. We're not going to really use them very much. You know, I should have mentioned here with the series, here we created our series and here we called our series and here it was. If you want to, you know, call something specific, we could call uh, John and boom, we get 41 because John's thing was 41. Oftentimes in pandas, that's how you call specific things. Uh, like down here, we called John to get the column John, you know, things like that. So we'll get into all this more detail later on. But really, I just wanted to kind of introduce you to pandas, get it installed, show you a couple of things you can do with it. And uh, I want you to become familiar with pandas because we're going to be using it a lot uh, for the next, you know, many videos. Uh, so it should be fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, because today is my official birthday. Thumbs up, everybody. <laughs> and check out Codemy.com, where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 85,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.